Good morning. Um, my name is Joshua Bednarik. I have the honor of serving as the director of the Planning and Development Department. And today's really all about listening to all of you about what we can do to be better partners. Partnership is something you're going to hear me talk about quite a bit. And as we frame this effort to reach out and listen to our customers, we want to do so under the veil of partnership. Building a city is a complex endeavor that we can't do without all of you sitting in this room. And we want to approach that endeavor with that, with that theme of partnership, that how can we help one another to make the city even better? So as I said at the beginning, we're really here to listen. Um, part of what we're going to do before we do that listening is I want to talk to you about the management team that we have up in here and the effort that we're making to make sure that everyone, all of our customers understand who we have in place and where and who you can work with if you're ever running into challenges or uh, better yet, when you're getting started on a project and you want to hit the ground running. So uh, up here, you should have seen, many of you should have seen, if you haven't, we'll be happy to get it to you, a, a packet of information that I sent out in advance of these listening sessions, highlighting a, our organizational structure for the department. We've made some changes over the last couple of months, I think aligning some of the services that we provide to better align with uh, the, the permits and the processes and the applications that we have coming in. Uh, right now, I'm going to turn it over to the management team because a big part of this uh, endeavor is making sure that you know who we have on, on board. So I'm going to uh, turn the mic over to each of the, oh, actually, the mic's up there. So maybe I have you guys come. You guys, you guys loud enough? All right. I'll have each of the management team uh, introduce themselves and uh, members of their team. So we'll start with Sam. Thank you, Josh. Good morning. My name is Sam McAllen. I'm an assistant director here with the Planning and Development Department, and I oversee a couple different functions. One of them is our inspection teams. Um, I also oversee our Office of Customer Advocacy uh, that is actually headed up by Renee Blakely. Renee's in the back and helping us out with today. Um, also our uh, Ombudsman Office, and that is headed up by David Urbanato. David is with us as well. And then I'm a, a contact with our working unit uh, that's taking care of the TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor uh, manufacturing company up north. So um, those are my team members. Then I have Tom Wandry, who's going to talk a little bit later, but he is the uh, deputy director over inspections. And he'll tell you about his team in just a few moments. Jason, sorry. Uh, good morning, everybody. Jason Blakely. I'm assistant director over our plan review division. Um, I oversee our, our building and fire plan review team. Our site development team, uh, who Miguel Victor's over, and then also our building official team, which uh, Mike Abeg is over that group. So I will let them introduce themselves and talk a little bit about each of their uh, sections. Marianne? Good morning, everyone. My name is Marianne Fotinos, and I'm an assistant director over a business and strategy division. And that division really handles most of the business operations of the department. One of the biggest things that we're working on and that we're really getting excited to um, embark on is uh, a third release of our Shape Phoenix project, which is replacing all of our business applications with one consolidated, um, modern, uh, user-friendly application and the next release we've done residential we've done planning and zoning so the next release is commercial that's going to be a big complex release but we're very very excited about that uh, some of the other areas i work on um, the department's finances fees ensuring that we um, recover uh, our costs um, you know updating fee schedules those sorts of things and i do have uh, deputy here that also works um, in my team and his name is Adam Miller and he does uh, growth infrastructure special projects and uh, financial stability so he'll um, have a chance to introduce himself as well so thank you hello hi my name is Tom Wandry I'm the uh, deputy director over inspections um, in the inspections we also have the AFP program which is the annual facilities program we also um, over communications which does it for the whole department uh, we have uh, residential inspections and also commercial inspections and some sub subcategories of those are we have non permitted construction we have combo inspections and we also um, try to manage the our after hours program uh, for noise complaints. With that, I'll turn it over to Adam. 
Thanks, Tom. Good morning, everybody. I'm Adam Miller. I'm Deputy Director over Growth, Infrastructure, and Finance. Uh, 17 years with Phoenix, 22 years in local government. Uh, the Growth, Infrastructure, and Finance uh, section has kind of a broad array of, of both external and, and internal facing uh, operations. Uh, a big part of what we do begins with uh, overseeing the city's growth forecasts. So my team does our growth projections. That information is used to inform our capital facility needs and, and uh, used by our client departments, water streets, fire, parks, uh, you name it, to inform their facility master plans, which translates to uh, sometimes zoning stipulations and other types of developer exactions. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with the development impact fees program. That's part of, uh, that's part of our role as well. Uh, also, related to the growth projections, uh, we can use that information to look at the planning department, planning and development department's finances and uh, our revenue situation, uh, look at what our, our building permit fees are. Um, I think it's notable, uh, real, remarkable really, that we haven't increased uh, permit fees in, in over a decade. Um, but that's the sort of thing that my team is, is looking at uh, with respect to preparing for um, preparing for department costs, looking at staffing levels and, and that sort of thing from a, from a fiscal standpoint. Hi, I'm Helena Reuter. I am the Historic Preservation Officer for the City of Phoenix. Uh, so we have nearly 10,000 properties on the Phoenix Historic Property Register, the vast majority of which are residential properties. Um, there are commercial properties. Generally, in terms of commercial properties, um, we, we get involved more in cases of um, there's a 30-day demolition hold for all commercial properties over 50 years of age in the city of Phoenix. Uh, so we do review those demolitions that come through. Uh, we also do uh, federal compliance through the National Historic Preservation Act. So if you're using federal funds, getting federal permits, those also come to our office for review. Now I'll hand it off to Mike. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Aveg. I'm the uh, acting deputy director and building official. Um, so the building official group, I work with our technical leads. Um, they are our primary assets for training staff. Um, we also uh, are over the code adoption. So we're looking at the new 2024 I codes uh, and we'll be making recommendations to council for that adoption. Um, we also uh, work with staff and uh, both plan review and inspections as they work with customers uh, trying to work through the plan review and inspection process. Um, sometimes there are cases where we need to find alternatives to the letter of the code and so we work with interpretations and code modifications and those processes. Uh, I also oversee the uh, self-certification program. Uh, not sure if any of you are familiar with that but uh, we have one of the most robust programs in the country for self-certification. Um, we do the training and we also do the audits. Um, and then also our TRT, which is an in-house technical review committee that oversees the policies and procedures that help us implement the code. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you today uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. My name is Miguel Victor. I'm the deputy director for the site development section. So our site, our, our section includes our site plan review, civil plan review, landscape, and our traffic review. So uh, we coordinate with all our other sister departments regarding uh, pre-applications and preliminary reviews. So uh, we are responsible for uh, starting the process off once it gets through the entitlement process. So we take it uh, from pre-application all the way up to uh, final site plan approval. So other things that our section is responsible for is the design review committee, uh, technical appeals, and uh, abandonment processes. Uh, so I'm also looking forward to hearing uh, what you guys have to say today about our process and any ideas you may have for uh, improvements. Thank you. Tristan. Thank you. Um, Trisha Gomes, Deputy Director of the Planning and Zoning Division. So that'll cover zoning, the public counter, all application intake for our public hearings, the long range section, which is our village planning committees, and um, our sign section. So all sign permits, wall signs, billboards, all of that. Thank you, Trisha. Oh, okay. Yeah.
many of you who were in attendance at our Monday session uh, heard me talk about, and we'll continue to reiterate this at all of our sessions, these three areas of focus for us as a department as we look to endeavor to enhance our service. Uh, they're personal, seamless, and innovative. You know, part of what we lost a little bit during the pandemic especially was a level of personal service. And uh, everybody on this stage is committing to try to restore that. We know certainly there's some challenges as we continue to implement a hybrid service model, but we're here to hear you out, right? Where are the areas that you're still feeling disconnected uh, but it goes beyond just how we're connecting with you. We want to make sure that everybody in the department embraces that as an approach, right? We, we're, we're starting to implement just little measures, making sure you've got your camera on, having your photo on your profile to reinforce that there are hardworking civil servants, human beings here at the department, ready and willing to serve each and every one of you. Uh, I've been with the city for uh, 22 years. And when I started off at the city, Frank Fairbanks was the city manager and a concept that he really pushed was uh, called seamless service. And the idea was that as you engage with the city, that you take, uh, as someone engages with the city, that employee took ownership of that customer until they were set in the right space. And I, I certainly acknowledge, especially during the pandemic and maybe even a little bit today, when folks are calling uh, the, the city hall or our department and they're not getting to the right spot, there is a tendency to sort of, well, you're, you're not calling the right spot because you didn't know where to begin with. You need to call this number or you need to give you this, right? We need to do a better job as folks are re-engaging with us to take ownership of those customers, to, to make sure that they're getting to the right spot in a meaningful way. That's one aspect of seamless that we're going to re reinforce. And then innovative. You know, part of being innovative is listening to some really great ideas. And we got a lot of those on Monday. Looking forward to hearing more of those today. I'm gonna have Jason come up and talk a little bit about, we certainly know that we've had some areas to improve. I hit on, I think these three areas of focus for us. I want Jason to come up and talk about how we're already looking to em em embed and already uh, working towards making us more personal, seamless and innovative as a department. Jason. All right, thank you, Josh. Um, I, I think we can all agree that as we moved into the pandemic and even out of it, we struggled a lot with communication. And that's one of the things that we've really been reinforcing with our staff is making sure that they're getting back to our customers in a timely manner. Um, you know, even if it's just to say, hey, I received your message, I'm looking into it, I will get back to you by such and such date. I mean, that goes a long way uh, for our customers. They know that the message has been received, they know someone's looking at it, and they have an expectation of when to receive some type of response. So um, as a management team and our, all of our you know, supervisors, we've really been stressing that. Um, if I get calls or emails related to someone not responding, I put it right back on that employee. Hey, um, reach out to so-and-so, please make sure that you're getting back. Uh, we also want to establish um, very consistent standards for our communication, especially within our plan review and our inspections teams, making sure the comments that are going out to the customers are clear, uh, they can understand them, they, it leads them to a path of what we're expecting to see in return when the plans come back or if they're out in the field and it's an inspection comment. You know, again, making sure that we're guiding them to what it is that we're expecting, not just saying comply with NEC 210.52. That does nothing, right? Um, co coordinating monthly meetings with our, our sister departments and our, our other stakeholders. Uh, a lot of comments from the last uh, meeting we had on Monday listening session was related to, you know, development issues or challenges that we run into that have to do with street transportation, the fire department, public works, water. You know, we're there to be kind of that conduit between those departments, but we need our sister departments to understand, you know, what our expectations are as a department, and, and hopefully they're living up to those as well. So that's something Josh, myself, and the management team are really pressing with our other departments as well. And then uh, other thing in terms of communication is making sure we're highlighting paths to escalate, escalate any uh, challenges, issues that you're having. Josh mentioned it in terms of introducing the management team. You guys got an overview of what we all oversee, kind of know who to hit up if you're running into challenges. but we want you to work those out first at staff level, supervisor, you know, then potentially a manager. If, you're, if we're going straight from a plan of view comment to Ken Alexander or Mike Abeg because they don't agree with it, that's, that's not really what we're looking to do. And that doesn't um, align with our goal of empowering our employees. So that's going to be the next thing we touch on. So seamless, uh, definitely empowerment of staff. I kind of just talked about it, but we need to provide as much training as we can to our staff members. We're going to be going through a 
building code adoption here in 2025. We'll be preparing for that next year. So obviously there's gonna be a lot of training on the building code side, but across the board throughout the department, uh, one of the great things that Miguel, Miguel Victor's team's been doing with the site planning team, uh, they help hold design review forums every Thursday morning. Their staff members bring issues that they run across uh, at the counter on a set of plans, and they're discussing that with the entire group to make sure that we're ensuring consistency. So those are the type of things we wanna push throughout the entire department and all of our sections. Uh, foster that culture of ownership of an issue. You might not have the answer, but at least connecting uh, the customer with the appropriate person that may be able to provide that answer and following through and making sure the customer gets the, you know, the resolution that they're looking for. Uh, in terms of empowerment too, when our staff are making good decisions, us as a management team, we wanna make sure that we're backing them. Um, you know, it takes a few minutes out of our day when we see email communication come across where our staff has made a really good call or done, you know, provided really excellent service. Just making sure that we're following up with that staff member knowing that we saw it and, and knowing that we truly appreciate it. And then when they have areas where maybe, Tom, you wanna come up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, where we see areas where maybe staff did not make an appropriate call or maybe we wanted to approach something differently, making sure that we're, we're taking advantage of those teachable moments not just brushing it off and moving on to the next project. Those are really areas, we don't wanna come down on our employees, but we want them to improve. And if they, they can't improve unless they know what, you know what is expected of them, right? All right, um, so innovation, Josh touched on it. Uh, this, this for us was huge. Um, we've gone through a reorganization over the last six months. We had several of these positions vacant for four to five to you know, six months. Um, what Josh mentioned, aligning our resources with some of the areas where we needed a little more oversight. Um, getting Sam over the inspections team took a big lift off of me, so thank you, Sam. Um, I think I had 380 people at one point, which is, you know, I, I can't focus that much if I have that much oversight, right? Um, getting Miguel Victor as a site development deputy director has been a huge uh, plus for our, our site development team, and we've already seen significant improvements with that team as well, so getting this organizational structure in place was huge. Um, Shape Phoenix, so Marianne uh, Fatinos is in charge of our Shape Phoenix implementation. Obviously a huge uh, project for us, the largest IT project we've ever had in the history of the department. Um, so we've gone through two releases on that. We're gonna be ramping up for release three in 2025, which is gonna include all of our commercial, civil, and site permits, plan views. Um, so, you know, that does take some time away from our staff. We have to have our SMEs as part of those conversations to make sure that the program is meeting our, our needs in terms of a business operation. I uh, really want to evaluate our processes. Mike touched on it, um, reducing touch points wherever we can. Uh, we have a lot of touch points right now with our intake process, and we're constantly looking at that. It's like, how can we improve this? You know, does it really need to touch 10 people within the department before it gets back to you? Uh, so some of the things that we're looking at and areas where we want to improve as well. And then uh, finding way, new ways to fill vacancies. I, I think we've all struggled with this as an industry over the last you know, five or six years. Uh, it's hard to find talented people to fill these, these roles. We've been running at a 20% vacancy rate for the last two or three years. Um, it's gotten a little better. The city council recently approved uh, some upgrades to our pay scale, so that's, that's been helping. But we still have to um, fill uh, quite a few vacancies and making sure that we're getting qualified staff in those positions to provide those services that uh, you guys are expecting. And with that, I will turn it over to Josh for the next steps. Thank you, Jason. So where do we go after we have our listening session, all of our listening sessions, we're gonna compile that feedback. We are recording all of this. And so as, as you guys get geared up to come up to the microphone and share your thoughts, we'll just try to keep in mind that there's gonna be some, some kids watching Channel 11 uh, one day. <laughs> uh, and we wanna make sure that uh, we make the editing as possible for Matt over there. Uh, so, uh, but you know, part of this is tell a story about what we heard and what we're going to do together moving forward. And so we're, we're, we're doing everything we can to keep track of that. As you, as you come up to make a comment, if you haven't already, just fill out a card. We're wanting to make sure that we're keeping track of who we heard from what the, what, and what they, uh, feedback they provided us. Okay. So here's the structure for the conversation. And those of you who are on Monday, you know. Uh, we're going to ask that you start off the conversation with uh, highlighting an area that you think we're doing. Where are we doing well? And part of that is... So really, if we're doing something well, um, that we need to lean into that more. Maybe, maybe that approach is something that we need to look at in other areas as well. And then, where are the areas we need to improve upon the most? And so, um, 
know, myself, Renee, uh, David, uh, Helen will walk around. If you've got a card you want to fill out and speak, the first one I've got uh, in hand right now is Craig Baker. So Craig, come on up. Thanks again for being here. Day two, right? <laughs> Day two. Um, first, I want to start is four months ago, Josh, you and I talked. We on this project, particular residential project, and you had brought what you were looking at doing, and you've delivered. So kudos to that. That's that's great. I really appreciate that. Seeing when you guys say something, you're delivering, where it's not just talk, you know, empty promises. Uh, secondly, I had sidebars at the end of the meeting with staff, and I just wanted to let you guys know that I followed through per your suggestion, and I got the resolve, got the things resolved. So thank you very much on that. My life is so much better now because I don't have an owner hounding me. <laughs> All right, so as far as uh, two questions or two concerns, um, one other thing, on the pre-app meeting, civil, uh, we do civil, sorry, SBL engineering, civil, engin civil engineering firm. Um, there's been talk about too much fluff, too much code, not basically interpreting the code on what you would like to see or how the staff is interpreting it. Um, civil is pretty consistent. They don't boilerplate a lot of stuff. They tell us, you know, what 100-year storm we have to do, pre versus post, first flush, so forth. Uh, water department obviously stresses and tells us what water line sizes are there adjacent to our property, sewer line, so forth, which is great help when we order our fire flow test. Um, one of the concerns I have is it seems that when, it, when we do submit for CDs, that if we've abided by the pre-app comments or the direction that you want us to head with the project, that the reviewer isn't the same reviewer we had at pre-app. Um, so I'm not saying that the reviewer that's going to move forward with the CD review, um, review if they're not reading the comments that the pre-app reviewer made, or but I'm seeing an inconsistency there. Some are dead on. Some seem to skip around or pick and choose what pre-app. And then, of course, we're confused. It's like, okay, you ask for 100-year, two-hour, and then I get back, oh, you can do pre versus post. Well, I sh thought I could do pre versus post to begin with. That's what I showed on my conceptual plan, but they didn't make the comment. They didn't mark up. Like, I'm not seeing comments on the civil side. So when we submit a um, conceptual G&D plan, I'm not really seeing markups like you would on the site plan. Like, you guys mark up everything on the site plan, different color, purples this, greens this, so forth. Civil marks up on the site plan, but they're not marking up on my pre-app or my conceptual plan. Um, like I said, the written comments are great to follow, but it's we're submitting a, we're required to submit a conceptual G&D plan in most cases, but I'm not seeing comments being put on that plan. It's always on the site plan, which that's being handled by the architect a lot of times. They just show the retention basin. They don't really show my calculations, which you know I've provided on the conceptual. Um, then to move on, the other thing on at pre-app, is there, is there any reason why, if staff sees where we're going to have to have a technical appeal or we'd be required to have a technical appeal, is there any reason why we're not seeing that every time? Uh, and this is an example, uh, corner property on arterial street, um, if I want to tap the fire line for fire protection for the site. I have to do a technical appeal because obviously your code says the larger of the lines in the area. Well, to me, I don't know why you guys want us to go in the arterial streets if we can't dig, if we, if we, if we, can, if we can go a different direction, why do you want us to dig up an arterial street? I'm, I don't feel, I think it should be in the pre-app that just says, if it's adequate and we've got an eight inch line, say in the side street and a 12 inch line in the arterial, it should just be done deal. You should just tell us, we don't want you in the arterial street. It's just a nightmare. Um, traffic control, it's inexpensive. We still have to go through the technical appeal, but can it be resolved at pre-app so we know at that point, 
yes, we're going to allow you to tap the secondary street for a fire. Still fill out the paperwork. I have no problem doing that. But can just be something that simple. So those are the two I have. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. You're headed in the right direction. Um, again, the uh, 20, I've been on the private sector side now for 21 years. And, you know, Phoenix used to be the pinnacle of all the surrounding communities. They kind of fed off what you guys did and, and uh, it has slipped. So I'm glad that you're trying to steer the ship back. Thank you. Thank you. Next up we've got Brian Silkey. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thanks for the opportunity today. Um, my name is Brian. I work with Clayco, and we do a lot of the residential towers downtown and um, other industrial, um, other things across the Phoenix. But I, I primarily work in the downtown section with uh, with the multifamily high rise division on the construction side. Um, so I've had the privilege to be able to turn over. I think four projects downtown. And, um, and so throughout that time, I feel that I've been able to uh, establish a fairly decent rapport with a lot of the, the supervisors and managers, um, you know, at the city to get something uh, turned over. So I want to highlight the fact that, uh, you know, the city of Phoenix is extremely receptive when, when challenges arrive during construction to working through those at, at that level. Um, it, the the two things or uh, the the comments that I had wrote down for for areas of improvement or areas of opportunity that that I'd love to help be a part of is um, uh, is so that those issues don't get to that level. Um, I work with a lot of new people that are coming in, uh, working for Clayco and other organizations here in town, building um, these complex projects, and I think that the there's a, a struggle on our end to. To understand the blueprint on how to to build successfully in in Phoenix, um, I think that there's some challenges that we have with processes that maybe change a bit, that may not be consistent from uh, project to project or individual to individual, and that's a that's a challenge that we encounter and in turn create a lot of a hardship and reason why a lot of problems get escalated. And so, I, I would you know the one area that I would uh, recommend or love to see is. Uh, how do we establish a, a playbook, so to speak, so that when we start a project, um, you know, I'm bringing in travelers from all across the country that there's a there's a, a way that everyone knows how to get through the, the the project process from inspections to, you know, amendments to whatever it may be. Um, and so we're all successful together. The other the other area along with that. Um, and I think we can do as a contractor a, a much better job as well as being more proactive throughout the construction progress, uh, working with uh, each department on what our milestones are and, and what our timelines are and how do we get there. And part of that, like I mentioned, the playbook to, to do that. But I think that uh, we need to get more aligned there. It feels like we do a lot of last minute things. That's just the nature of how construction works. Um, and so sometimes it feels like our goals are not always aligned when we're working, you know, with city uh, in, in certain departments. And I think that uh, if we could find a way to collaboratively look at our schedule and how that aligns with what the city needs to be successful to turn over a project, I think we can uh, be much more proactive uh, in that approach. So thank you guys. I, I appreciate it. I, I bring the things up, but overall, I, you know, I still keep coming back to build in, in Phoenix, so I really enjoy working with you all. So thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Ryan Tempest. I work with uh, LJC, the Lamar Johnson Collaborative. We're an architecture firm. Um, we're part of the Clayco Enterprise, so working with this guy on a number of projects downtown. We have um, mostly multifamily residential projects that we're working on in downtown. Um, so for me as an architect, um, you know, I'm working mostly with the planning and development department, uh, commercial building services and sites. Um, one of the things that you guys are doing well on the personal side of things, um, I think it's been really great, the communication. Um, I know I work a lot with Craig Mavis lately, and um, he's just been super responsive. You know, anytime we have a question, e email him, he's responding, you know, definitely within the 24 hours, if not less. In fact, I'm getting your welcome emails back, which is pretty amazing. So 
Um, kudos to you guys on that, and thanks for that responsiveness. I think the one thing that we'd like to see, um, you know, from my standpoint, working with our developer partners, one of the biggest things that they're looking for is, you know, getting in the ground uh, as quickly as possible. So time is a big factor. Um, the review times for the building permits are uh, extending. And as an architect, that just means that we have less design time as those review times um, increase, which is, you know, problematic, I think, for everybody. Um, so I think that one thing that would be really great is during the review process, just to have more of a dialogue, um, you know, understanding the rounds of reviews. Um, it would be really nice as we're going through these reviews just to be able to have kind of a dialogue, communications with the reviewers to maybe answer a lot of the questions that we're getting on the reviews that honestly we feel like could be easily um, responded to, clarified. I mean, a lot of times comments are questions and stuff that we could just eliminate a whole review time, getting kicked back into the queue, extending that, that re, um, permit review process. And, you know, we could easily sh uh, slip sheet a few things back in and, you know, not even just like from a money standpoint to try to save money, it's just the time factor. You know, I think that there's just uh, a dialogue would really help us all um, in kind of streamlining that process. So that's the one thing that I'd like to see from my standpoint, um, but otherwise you guys have been doing really great, so. Thank you. Thank you. I know there's some more cars for me. Anybody? All right. Lisa Nelson. Good morning. Lisa Nelson with Terrascape Consulting. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, most of my experience of late has been with build for rent projects, as I'm sure the city, many of you, have been involved in them or seen them come across your desk. Uh, I spoke earlier to some of you individually about it. It's very helpful and meaningful to me when staff members actually reach out. I'm echoing the previous statement that was made and allow us to do slip sheeting. Uh, I think it's a little rare and that could be, uh, that needs to happen more often uh, when we're pushed into a third review and to pay review fees when the comment is, um, was not brought up during pre-app. It's their new comments that just came out of nowhere. Um, and so, so that's a little bit frustrating. Uh, one of the things I really like about working in Phoenix uh, actually is the process. I know exactly what to do in Phoenix. When we go and work in other municipalities, their processes uh, are disjointed and it takes a lot longer, I think, um, to get through, to get to a point where we can pull permits. Uh, However, in some ways, uh, we have a project that has 14 plan sets uh, with a project that is in two phases and then many subphases, and that has turned out to be um, quite a challenge for us. And so what has happened is we'll get a comment on one plan set that we can't approve the other 13 plan sets because of one comment on one. And so what I've tried to do is work with staff and talk about having conditional approvals where those could be sitting and waiting instead of being rejected. So they were all being pushed into third reviews with fees. Uh, I think we're almost there, we're there. So um, let's see. Um, I, w I was talking to uh, a fellow planner or friend planner about some of the frustrations I think too are um, some of you I've worked with before and so there's definitely a rapport that are but I think sometimes it feels like the attorneys might have a, a better window or oppor window of opportunity to speak to people at a higher level. And so just understanding that path and having that ability to, to um, communicate and make progress when we're having frustrations at a lower level, um, that would be appreciated. Um, it does seem like the pre-app process has been a little diluted of late. And again, mimicking what was said earlier um, from a civil standpoint, we're getting uh, template comments and not really digging into the details where some of these projects, I think, actually have detailed issues that we need to work out in the beginning. Otherwise, we're going into, again, on some of these build for rent projects, the amount of time it takes to design them is um, incomprehensible at times. It's very difficult. So making those changes later on after a first review is um, the rework is significant. Um, we've had some challenges as well. Um, with, I think, flood control and transportation uh, and having comments come in after the fact 
and actual just the actual processes with FEMA and CLOMERS and LOMERS um, that have had significant delays to projects uh, relating in as much as six months, eight months, something like that. Uh, so if we could work, I think there could be better communication with the, the sister departments on some of those. Um, and then uh, also inspections. I think there's some new young blood out there in the field and uh, there's been some changes uh, to approved plans that they're making in the field. That has been a struggle as well um, and which snowballed into we're going to make a policy change at the, at, the, at the city and delayed us about a month or six weeks in putting in a driveway. And so I would really appreciate spending some time talking about some of those as well. And there's other instances where the inspectors are absolutely amazing and responsive. And so we do appreciate that as well. Thank you. <laughs> I was including you. Sherry, thanks so much. Yes, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sherry Koshal. I'm with the Empire Group, and I'm very pleased to be here today. We are um, primarily, besides our downtown projects that we've been um, building, our primary focus over the last few years has been the multifamily build to rent, which is why Lisa kept turning around and and uh, given me the eye. But um, I would like to say that um, I'm very pleased to be here today and thank you for this opportunity to really share our insights and our thoughts from our perspective. I almost feel as though your presentation earlier was like reading my mind for the last several months. And so I very much appreciate um, the lengths that you're going to with your three objectives and what you're working on with your staff. I've been in the development industry as a civil engineer for over 25 years. I, of course, now work, excuse me, work for a developer. But um, in working with our teams, I really firmly believe that when it comes to success, it's really down to people. And the people are the human beings who are there working hard every day and really being able to empower them to do their very best every day and to work together and collaborate and communicate. Um, that's what I see from your presentation today, and so that's a lot of hard work to help that process along, especially when you have new people coming in, you're reorganizing. Um, so I kudos to all of you for working hard at that and helping to really move that agenda down and push it down through your staff and bring them together to to really make things successful. I can see that happening. And in fact, just in this past week, um, I will say that communication, I have received several emails back within the 24 hours. Um, I've received what I see to be, you know, let me reach out to somebody and get that answer for you versus just kind of a void of feedback, no response back to my email. So um, I do see some of that tide turning and um, I really look forward to seeing that moving forward. On my comment card, I did put some specifics on there um, beyond empowering your staff and working together with collaboration and communication. Um, as far as process, I really feel like the continued rollout of the SHAPE program, um, I think there are definite um, points of feedback that we'd love to share with you and your team. Some specifics, just maybe even little things. I'm not a technology person at all, but I'm sure there's things that could be implemented that could just make a few little things really help out on our end. Um, so I'd be happy to share that more specifically with you and have my team do that as well. Um, but the main comment I had from a process standpoint, when it comes to the work that we're doing with our multifamily build to rent, and kind of to Lisa's point, um, from the standpoint of process, I really feel like the final site plan becomes um, somewhat of an impediment to our process because it drives or it it's kind of the precursor to some of our building plans getting through the process. And when we're working through, to me, the multifamily build to rent is like commercial on steroids. It's very detailed. There's a lot of intricate um, 
parts and pieces on the civil and on the building end of things, and you have maybe 250 buildings, which some act as commercial, some are the residential, of course, versus maybe three or four large commercial buildings. So um, it's, it's like commercial on steroids from my perspective, and um, really having needing to be nimble through that process, adjusting to comments, even adjusting to the developer changes. We do change our program now and then. We may change a building size, and so all of our consultants have to try and respond to that while we're in the process of plan review. Um, so if there is a way with that final site plan to maybe re-examine how that helps projects move through the process or perhaps how it hinders them in some way and make that more of a simultaneous type of um, process versus so linear. And then we have to backtrack and go and get final site plans reapproved for minor changes that come through the plan review process. So um, I'd be happy to go into more detail, but I don't wanna do that here. So. Um, if we can have that conversation, I'd be happy to give that feedback. So again, thank you very much. I do feel like um, I, I want to see the success, not only from our perspective, but our interactions with you. And so we'll do everything we can from our end um, and appreciate you implementing everything that you've outlined here today. Thank you. Grant Olds, Grant Olds Architects of Phoenix Design One. I've been practicing in the Valley for about 40 years and I was at session one. Uh, and uh, what's uh, interesting for me is the process that I've gone through over the this week in talking with people about what happened at session one, what I, what I feel is the intent of what the city's trying to achieve uh, has given me some clarity as to what I, what I see as, as we're all in the same rowboat if we could just all row in the same direction, it'd be awesome. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're trying to have successful projects. You guys are trying to build a successful city. So we're all trying to get to the same place and with different pieces of the puzzle. I had a few things though that, uh, that I, w we've talked a lot about communication and staff's response. And, and I'm, I'm in heartened to hear that other applicants are starting to see that that transition's occurring. I haven't had that experience yet, but I'm excited that that's, uh, that that's where it's headed. Uh, the good thing, because I didn't start with a good thing last time, but I'll start with a good thing this time, is that I do feel that this, uh, that this is uh, more sincere than what I actually thought it probably was going into it. Um, so I'm, I'm, very, uh, I'm very glad to hear that. The issues that we're having are not understanding a lot of times what's happening inside the city hall. In, in these internal conversations that occur between your departments, we don't have a way of understanding what those are, where they came from, or how they're driving the project. So we're off, often, we often feel blindsided. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna give you just a really quick example. We've got a project right now we had a client come to us. The client said to us, it's a very small building, uh, 3,000 feet, let's say. Client came to us, they've been in the building about 10 years, they don't own the building. The building owner has said to them, you wanna add on about 800 square feet, um, it's all on your nickel, whatever the city makes you do, it's all on your nickel. The client came to me and said, what do you think city's gonna make us do? I took a ride out to look at this facility. It's very old, doesn't meet any standards that I can see. Uh, it was a previous jack-in-the-box. It's now a dental facility. Um, so my recommendation to the client was that we do a pre-app and let the city tell us what are these big issues gonna be so that the client can make a decision. We negotiated a fee for just that service, no other services. So basically due diligence until, they, until the client could see if it was worth investing their money in a project they don't own. We logged it in for pre-app. Uh, it went through whatever internal review happens. Uh, the determination was is that pre-app wasn't necessary. It went straight to site. And my pre-app money was refunded. 
was awesome. I thought that must mean we're good to go. I called, uh, did talk to the site reviewer that it was assigned to. And I said, Hey, my biggest concern is, is as far as I can tell, none of the parking meets standards. The sizes are wrong. The handicaps in the wrong place. The, so we're willing to, uh, as part of this development, we've already told the client, ADA parking will be required. We must make that work. Uh, so is there anything else that you're going to make us do with all this other parking? Because I can't redo the whole site. Nope. Non-conforming. Historically, it's that way. You're good. Fix the handicap. We're good. So we report that back to the client. The client's like, great. Let's go for it. We write a new contract. We start working. All of a sudden, I get a comment from the fire department that the building was supposed to be sprinkled in 2004 when they did a change of use from a jack-in-the-box to a dental facility. For whatever reason, that never occurred. Now all of a sudden I'm being told your project has to sprinkle this entire facility. So my point to this is it moved, with, it moved unilaterally from a pre-app to a site with no no dialogue with, with me as the applicant. My report to the client was what I thought, because it moved unilaterally, was a good report. And at the end of the day now, I got a client who is extremely unhappy with us, assumes that GLOA did not do their job, uh, and, uh, and essentially is saying to me, we've been in that building for 10 years without a sprinkler system. Why do we need a sprinkler system today? I have no idea. I got no documentation. I got nothing from the city telling me why have they been in there without a sprinkler system. If the sprinkler system was required, then why would they ever give it a C of O? So my assumption is, is somebody worked out a deal at some point and said, you don't need it. But anyway, regardless of that, it's it, the point to that whole story, and I understand now that it was long-winded, but the point of that whole story was when the city does things interdepartmentally, we as applicants have no idea what drove that. We don't understand what, what, what our risk is. We don't understand how it impacts the project and we don't understand how it impacts the client. In this particular case, I would have much preferred to have had a pre-app told the client, don't move forward with this project. Um, we would have saved everybody a lot of heartache. So we, we need whatever level that communication is that we understand what's happening internally so that we understand who, who has seen it, who hasn't seen it, who should have seen it, who should have had comments, who did have comments. We really got to have something that tells us that. Um, the hierarchy as far as knowing, okay, I'm getting a comment, I'm not getting anywhere, who's the next person to call, that hierarchy, maybe this handout will help us deal with that. Uh, I have always found that if I email Josh or I email Ken Alexander, I get either I get a response, I always get a response, but I'll get told who to call next or who to, who to touch base with. And that's super helpful, but I also think it ties up your time. Maybe I should just know who my next person is. Um, we talked last time a little bit about the bites at the apple. You can't throw a comment at us on third review that changes everything that we've done for seven or eight months. It's, it's, our assumption is every review is a good review. We pay for a review, every review should be a good review. If you're throwing a new item at us on third review or second review that hasn't come up and pre-app didn't come up, it's unfair. It's an unfair thing. It takes weeks for us to find out where it came from, why it didn't come up before, and often, more often than not, the comment disappears. So that's an issue for us because of the time, the time and, and the time it takes us to do it. I think I mentioned to you guys before, uh, and I know, you know, public sector, private sector, it's a business for us. So we used to, when I got into this business, we would allocate somewhere south of 10% of our man hours for dealing with city staff. Now we're almost up to 40%. The projects have gotten more difficult. The easy ones, somebody said last time, the easy ones have all been built, they're harder. But that means staff has to look at it too, that it is harder. We can't just gloss over reviews. They have to be good reviews. And we have to be able to trust that they are good reviews. Um, 
the gatekeeper issue we talked about before, I'm not gonna bring that one up again, and then public records information. So one of the things we've noticed lately is that uh, Phoenix has gotten much more diligent about having us do public records requests, and that's fine. Uh, when we get comments back that tell us to look at uh, zoning stipulations from 1968 item G, you know, we all we can do is take what you write us, put it on our public records request form and send it in. We never get back what we ask for, never. It's almost every time, it's three or four times before we get what we need. I don't know if staff is referring to a document and they're using it as a, as a tool to, um, to uh, reinforce their position, then, that, then that, that document needs to be forwarded to us with the review comments. Because otherwise, we're now waiting another two weeks just to even understand why, where the comment came from. So the theme of all of this is, is that the timelines need to shrink, communication needs to get bigger, uh, consistencies need to get bigger. Uh, and then the only, this is completely off base, but uh, every single client I have is anti-drinking fountains. So I'm certainly hoping that in this review of uh, public policy, that City of Phoenix will uh, take a, either take it out of the IBC or do an amendment that allows us to do other options. I know you already have some of those. Uh, but every single client we have now has read the, the big COVID reports about public drinking fountains. Drinking fountains are a thing of the past and we need to blow past that. Everybody carries their own water these days anyway. Uh, that's about it. I think consistency is our number one problem. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm Hello. I have to stand up like this. I'm sorry. It looks a little weird. <laughs> uh, Cassandra Ayers, Barry Riddell. Uh, I know some of you, but not all of you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> uh, these are some of the comments that were generated from, I believe, uh, the meeting you guys had earlier that I unfortunately wasn't at. So if I butcher some of these, I'm going to have to ask Elise for help. Uh, one thing that, and by the way, we're very, very, very appreciative that you guys are taking the time to call us together, to listen as a group, to some of the frustrations that, that we've had um, in dealing with everybody, especially since the pandemic, but we're, we are appreciative of it. Uh, staff needs to be empowered to think outside the box uh, instead of just saying no from the beginning. Think of a way to make something happen, make something work, instead of just immediately saying no. One of the comments we heard earlier was that we shouldn't be coming to you guys. And you're right, we shouldn't, but we've worked with you for so long. We have relationships with you. We trust you. You guys have made it a practice to try and make projects work. That should filter down to the staff level as well. As, you know, If it just won't work, that's fine. Tell us it just won't work. But instead of just saying no from the outset, let's see if we can find a way to get to yes. The, oh, here's a bugaboo of mine. Minor site plan reviews are being required for all uh, sites that go through the lot split and lot combos. A specific example is uh, 52nd Street in McDowell is a project that we're working on. It's a giant piece, it's the old Motorola site. We're going through a PUD right now. There have been some sales on the site uh, that needed to be split off and combined with uh, the purchaser. We're having to go through a minor site plan. We did get it waived. Thank you, Craig Messer, for waiving it. I know you're not here today, but thank you, Craig Messer, for waiving it. They were going to make us go through a minor uh, site plan approval in order to get that lot combo lot split approved. I have three other projects that that's also being required on. No structures are changing. Nothing is being done. We're just moving pieces, the parcel lines around. It is a huge time and money suck for our clients, translates into real world dollars. Uh, let's see, site planning, this one came from Elise. Site planning needs a dedicated planner line because it is by far the hardest department to get a hold of in person. 
Uh, also, uh, in, along the lines of what the other gentleman was talking about, uh, with regards to uh, steps from a case that was previously approved. If you're not going to provide those to us with the uh, pre-op comments, which would be extraordinarily helpful, maybe you guys could put those on the community map so that we could access them from that portal instead of having to do public records requests, endless, endless public records requests. Uh, there are other comments, but I'm gonna save those for Monday. <laughs> So, uh, if anybody has any other questions. Thank you, Anybody else have any comments? Want to come up to the mic? Well, we've got the room for a little bit. We've got coffee. You know, part of what uh, we end on here is that we're here to help, right? And so, while you've got access to the, the, you know, the majority of the management team here, I think we're just missing uh, one person, we're missing Ken. Uh, Grab a cup of coffee, bend their ear. I, I heard some good ideas. You know, we don't have to wait till this is over, this listening session, to get started on some of these things. And so, uh, re really, really uh, appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, take a moment, if you, if you don't know any members of our management team, exchange contact information, start talking to them about some of the things you've got like here today. Just grateful for you all being here this morning. And we'll be back at it again on Monday. My, my one last ask is, if you have colleagues or clients or anybody in the field that you know, would, would enjoy or, uh, or value an opportunity like this, please send the information their way. Uh, we really want as many folks to engage with us in this form. Not that it's the only opportunity, but the more people that we get, it, the more valuable this is. So thank you again for being here. I really appreciate it.